work somehow, that I'm getting people to stop talking. Um, this bit um, is the bit about me, and I feel that I wrote this presentation about 900 years ago now, because of all the excitements of this morning and everybody else is. So um, what we're going to look at, or think about, or talk about, is a kind of overview of the sorts of things that we've done with schools across the local authority. Um, we have 54 schools here. Uh, five of them are special schools, about four nurseries, specific nurseries as opposed to nurseries inside schools. Maybe it's five sort of nurseries. Um, and then seven secondary schools and 33, 34 primary schools. There's a bit of overlap because there are special needs units in some of the schools. So if you add those numbers up and it doesn't make 54, that's why. Um, I met Mishka there, at BET. And it was a friend of ours, called Anne Casey, whom you may know, who's had various iterations in city learning centres and partnerships with schools and all sorts of place, places. And she and I go back a long way. And she said, oh, you must come and see this. So she introduced me to Mishka. And we were looking at the floor. And I said, OK, that's really interesting. Um, and how easy, how easy is it for children to create those? And I don't think that was the question he was expecting at that particular point. But he said, well... It's possible, and maybe we should talk a bit more about it. So we did, and that's where we are. So if it weren't possible for children to actually have some creative um, involvement in this, it wouldn't be in this room at all. Okay? It wouldn't be here at all. Um, we have here as well this afternoon a friend of mine, Saska, who's sitting. So Saska, if you would give a wave. Saska, I will refer to during this presentation because Saska is from one of our nurseries and he has some similar experiences to some of the experiences that have been shown this morning, which I'll talk about those um, with some of his pupils on the floor. But again, this is, you've only been here three times with that group of pupils, haven't you? And we're already talking about this from the, from the first visit. So I'm not making great claims about these technologies, I'm making great claims about what can be achieved with them. Um, and. Uh, through people who actually are thinking about the learning and not about the technology. Right, absolutely key. Wouldn't be here if that's what it was about. So, I'm going to start out by talking about what I, some of the things that we thought about and talked about. Creative opportunities for teachers and pupils. Let's not forget ourselves. We spend a lot of time making things. We spend a lot of time... I mean, I've not had my own class now for seven years. Very sad, but... Um, we spent a lot of time making things, making resources, making things written on pieces of paper that we photocopy, um, attempting not death by worksheet, but those sorts of things. We make a lot of things creating displays. Um, but actually, sometimes it's nice to actually get inside the creative process itself as a teacher, as well as for our pupils, um, because it makes us all happier. So, the moon... Um, apart from the fact that this is really one of the most compelling images of anything that I... That for, I personally get involved with in this floor. Um, this is a starting point that we use when we get teachers to come in who, who are interested in doing projects here. And we start with this and I say, OK, so what could we do with this floor? Um, and what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to um, think of three words. Because we're going to create a poem. So I'd like you to think of three words that come into your head Descriptive words. I mean, we spend more, more time on this with, ch with children, wouldn't we? We'd have done our preparation, etc., and our sentence level work, and our this, that, and the other. But we're going to write a class poem. We're going to do it now. Um, and, I've, and we're going to use a particular thing called Wordle. Can you wave at me if you've used Wordle before? OK, not very many people. OK, so you don't mind the two people, three people who've used it, because you might learn something. Really useful thing. So, what I'd like you to do... Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. This could be quite difficult. I'll tell you what, Hassan, could you coordinate who's going to tell me the first word on the... I don't, I'm not worried about the cups. <laughs> yep. Could you coordinate? Could you just go and point someone who's going to shout out a word at me? So yeah, I'd go around. Yes, at the back. Blue. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Spherical. 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 Right, next. Cheese. Cheese. <laughs> Mark, that's because you just had lunch. Yeah, okay. Reflection. Reflection. Lovely. Glow. We'll have five more, please. Glow. 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 Quiet. Quiet. We've got three more. Bright. Bright. 
Lonely. Ooh, nice one. Got enough? Any more? Serene. Oh. So the harder you have to think, the better it gets. <laughs> <laughs> These are marvellous words. Right, I'm going to just now... If I were doing this for children, we might do it on post-it notes or we might do it on a, a wall, etc., etc. The whiteboard, incidentally, is a leftover from the previous class when we just didn't get rid of it. If we were creating it, we may not put a whiteboard in here, but it's quite handy to use when, when we are in here, particularly for events like this. Um, so we could actually get them to scribble on the board or put them on post-it notes. So three or four words that then become a collective resource that they can draw on um, and then come and do some typing. Um, we have a big allergic reaction to doing lots of typing. Um, I'm happy to teach children how to type because I think it helps with their spelling because of the motor memory pieces, but I don't want children learning ICT spending lots of time typing because it is a waste of time. However, Wordle can help us enormously because this isn't the only way of doing it, but I'm going to pick spherical and say, actually, I like that word and I'm going to give it more emphasis. Okay. I'm going to give it more emphasis by copying and pasting and I'm going to give reflection more emphasis by copying and pasting as well. Doesn't matter, I'm doing this quite quickly. And then lonely is the other word. Now, can you see already, I'm thinking about the vocabulary I'm using and compiling. And I'm also doing a little bit of analysis because I'm looking at the poetic emphasis that I want to express related to that image. or well, that image which has now disappeared. Okay, and then that'll do, that'll do for now because this is just an example. And then we click go. And as long as your JavaScript is up to date on your computers, it will work. Now, it'll come up a bit like that. Okay. And down here, God, if I could get rid of ridiculous toolbars that are completely <coughs> unnecessary, disable that and disable that, you'll be able to see it. Okay, so down here is a randomised button, so I can click that and it will come up. Interestingly enough, it's, always, it's doing it. So I can actually start to look at the way I want my text to look. There's a sort of, I mean, that didn't take us very long. That could take quite a long time in poetry writing. But as a tool, a starting point, and then an online tool, um, we can also, in Wordle, just go and um, we can customise palettes or we can change the colour of palettes. We can change the font. Now, there are so many aspects of the ICT curriculum that this hits, but I'm not doing ICT, I'm writing a poem. That's ICT capability, isn't it? How can I use what I know in ICT to develop something creatively without even realising I'm doing ICT and making the choices that I already know how to make because I know there's going to be a drop down menu somewhere I'm going to be able to make those options and especially if I'm in year 5 or 6 I've got enough experience of what most of those might look like or I know what my favourite font of the week is so you can do all of those and you can also um, there are control elements in here and then once it's done that you can either upload it to the public gallery that will do for me for the moment, okay? Um, you just have to take a, print, a screenshot, a print screen of that and then paste it into a PowerPoint or save it or whatever, okay? So I'm not just talking about instant poetry writing. I'm talking about the level of engagement. You have a starting point here which is rather inspirational. You cannot get that moving moon image in any other way and it's on the floor and they are all sitting around it and they are putting their hands in. Even if you go on school journey and you devise your school journey to make sure that you, there is a full moon in the middle of the week when you've done all the preparatory work on the sentence level work and the word level work and all those how we use adjectives and how we compile them and how we talk about how we're going to arrange them. Even if you've done all of that, you can guarantee it will be cloudy when you found the perfect pond to look at the full moon in and it won't be there because it'll be there at three o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, so one of the things that's important is not only about a stimulus about that creative process, but it's then what you can then do because the stimulus was so rich. Okay, and it's about, I shall probably start repeating myself in the wrong order in this presentation, it's about a kind of opportunity, God, you can tell I, I was never any good at classroom management, that's why I didn't want furniture in here. Right, so it's about an opportunity for, I'll finish that sentence in a moment, it's an opportunity for using the virtual experience, don't want all of that, an opportunity for using the virtual experience to enhance the real one. So you'll see in the preview, going backwards of my presentation. Right, there we are. Right, that's the last time I get out of this presentation. <laughs> Similarly, with the cracks, okay? You've had a little go at that. Um, there's the sound on that as well. That was created for the Darwin exhibition, wasn't it? And it's actually, you don't have to have the penguin swimming about underneath. 
you can have anything there. And, um, you know, tr all that difficulty, when, when you have children, especially in key stage two, who are reluctant writers, it's not only boys, reluctant writers who find it difficult to engage in that narrative process because they failed at it for m much of the time and they can only do, and they went and had a cup of tea and then they went home. Um, you have to give them something different. You have to engage them in a different way. So thinking about, okay, what does it feel like to step out on the ice? What's the suspense? How's that building up? How does that make you feel? How are we going to put that into words over a period of time? You know, having a go, what does it make you think about? And now you're on the ice. You know, there are pupils that I would have loved to um, take out on a frozen pond, but um, none of us would do it because the risk assessment just wouldn't allow us. So um, really important. And because also the technology is sensitive enough to model that narrative process, you can gradually walk along that as the gra cracks gradually appear. You can think about the empathy. How did Darwin feel? when he was doing all that. Okay. I'm going to get, I'll crack on, otherwise we'll be here all afternoon. This is a music workshop happening in here. Music workshop with a composer, Anna Meredith. She'd never used the, the technology before. She's, um, she writes uh, classical style music but uses electronics, and her last performance, sort of public performance, was the Beatbox Concerto, which was at the South Bank. You might have heard about that. But she came and did some work with us. And what was interesting is... Yeah, we're using the lights in the coloured zones. We had different instruments in different areas. We were using it that way. But having someone who can enable the creative process, so getting someone who is a creative person. I mean, I think all teachers are creative. I think the process of teaching and learning is creative. And the more creative it is, the more learning takes place on both sides. Okay? But if you get someone who's not necessarily a teacher to bring that experience and that process to a space like this, it doesn't have to be a space like this, but, it, but it, that's one of the benefits that we found. So it re they can do that in the school hall, except it's not quite so quiet, and then they have to get out by course at 12 because they're getting ready for lunch. Okay, here it's, it's, a bit more, it's a bit more focused on exactly what you're doing. Okay, this is something that you'll have a chance to have a look at um, a bit later on the beams. So I'm showing you the engine that runs the beams. So each beam has um, media attached to it. This is image and sound. Okay, there are various options up here. I'm not going to teach you how to use this software. I just want you to see what the interface looks like. Um, this bit enables you to test it out. So this was, um, this was just on one of the days that we were having a look at making things. And this is one of the teachers who I'll talk a bit more about a bit later as well. Um, this is a test out page. So you can test out which number of beams. And all these images are part of a kind of sound image installation. Now... We all had enormous fun doing that, but it's so easy. You can do that with reception children. You can do it with nursery children. We're going to take some photographs of things that make noises, or we're going to take some photographs around our environment and see what they sound like. So what does it sound like when we put a pencil along the railings or rustle in the leaves and collecting those? You can take them out. You, you don't have to have a really good quality field recorder. You can do it on a mobile phone. Okay, so picking these things up and then attaching it to the various beams and then testing it out. And this application... Um, in the next session, you can actually have a fiddle with over there. Okay. This is what someone said. You might have seen some of that downstairs. It's the combination of the calm. When do we get that in schools? They're busy places. Sometimes they're like railway stations, aren't they? And when we can get our classrooms quiet, they're havens, and then a bell goes. So, yeah, but some of that creates a different kind of experience. And some of our schools as well can come here do all that preliminary bit, and then it can lead to all sorts of other bits and pieces of writing that happen for the next six weeks. What matters to us most, I mean, it matters to us what happens here, but what matters to us most is what happens in classrooms after they've been here, because that means it's made a difference. Okay. Language learning and development. You've heard from Jude, you've heard from Rachel and Catherine, you've heard from the West Oaks, how this is a stimulus to proper language learning. Um, but we've also been using it for MFL, and there it is. So you have a group of children, and we're practicing sentence construction. So je vais en berlade. Okay? Marvellous. And then you can, somebody can choose the next one, or you could start doing predictions. Um, that was simple to set up. That was set up by an MFL teacher who doesn't feel particularly confident in ICT. Of course we helped him, but actually it's collecting the images that takes the time. Collecting the images and deciding which way up they're going to be. Because, as you'll see on some other um, in, uh, applications, there's a process of thinking differently about how something's projected on the floor to when it's projected on the wall. 
After the children had completed the activities I had devised for them, they began creating their own rules and games based on the application. Ooh, that's real learning, isn't it? It's not just faffing about, I've finished that, I'm going to go off and do something on the beams now. It's, right, what more learning can we get out of this? And for that particular language, foreign language one, it was year five, so they'd done a lot of practice, they'd going backwards and forwards, playing that game, and then they started constructing more and more complex sentences. Je vais en balade avec Isabelle. Um, et après, oh, I'm not very good at French, so, au cinéma, and then, you know, so they were deciding what their route was going to be, and then also challenging each other. The level of engagement was remarkable. More language learning, this is Mishka's class. Um, this is two photographs overlaid where you can just wipe one off the other. Stimulating so much language and creating so much com uh, confidence. But those of us who are interested in early years development, should be all of us really if we're teachers, language and physical activity, all well, that Piaget stuff, uh, the big movement has to be mastered before we can actually do the small movement and actually that's intimately related to how we develop and how we develop our language. Well, a lot of children who've not developed the language as far as we'd like them to have missed out on that progression from that to that, so we have to give it to them and this is a new way of giving it to them, not as in the same way as we've been trying to give it to them for the last five, seven, eleven years. Okay. This was the breakthrough on the first day, it was a bit like Jude's experience. A four-word expression which I haven't heard from him before. It's, not a, it's also an instruction, isn't it, Saskia? This is Saskia's children. Asking him to take a photograph. Okay, so there was an absolute, there's an instruction there, an intent. Important. Saskia's bringing three children at the moment as a group, partly as a, an assessment towards statementing. All three children are going to be statemented. They all have different and very specific needs. Um, we did have a bit of a joke that we didn't want them to make too much progress on the floor because actually they might not get the statement, actually. But <laughs> that's, that's slightly f flippant. But there is an Im you know, there's clearly a very strong impact on these children and as much as we can do to enable them um, in other things, the language, the development. Okay. Audience and purpose. This is something that um, I spend my life hitting my head against the wall about, in fact, I almost dedicated a piece of Britain wall outside to this, so that when I have particularly GCSE students who, you know, with all the dieter things, all the multimedia, um, all those kind of qualifications that are, have a really good sense of this, audience and purpose and review and evaluation, um, they get their pals to evaluate it and they say, yeah, I think it looked really good. Well, we created a, um, an activity here You've seen this, the Roald Dahl, and this was created by a 15-year-old who was one of Hassan's students. I borrowed them for the day. Um, Hassan worked with me, which is marvellous. And you'll see this one on the floor, and it's Roald Dahl books. And the scenario, here it is, this is the brief, okay, written in a very kind of GCSE multimedia um, way. Um, the owner of a large bookshop has asked you to create one of these applications um, for children to play with while their parents are you know, buying things for Christmas, I think. Um, and then, you ha then there are specific requirements about drawing on the children's knowledge and that kind of thing. Important thing about copyright, which they never get the hang of because they spend half their life copying from Google or the board. A um, lot, of, lot of teachers do that as well, don't we? So we have to think about that carefully. But the copyright issue, so it enabled us to look at that. You know, you're in a public space, you use it. We're not just in a classroom where we can actually have a bit more flexibility over the images we use. We're in, a, we're in a commercial environment, so you must make sure that nobody comes and gets really touchy with you. Um, and then they had a choice of applications. And then a kind of, this was the first time they'd done it, so I gave them the step-by-step guide. -step <coughs> I also showed them the te oops, hypersensitive pen. So the steps for the template. So once you've compiled all your resources and the images you want to use, and then the right kind of format, um, that's the using and applying bit. Um, you then create your application using a particular template which is very simple to use so what your horizontal tile count is going to be what your vertical tile count is going to be the thickness, the scale borderline, tile return there's a little scroll down there which I've not troubled myself to copy and, um, and then also collecting the media you can either have one image which will be broken up into tiles or you can have lots of images which are stored in a file directory 
which you've taken the trouble to make sure you've numbered correctly so that the right top tile matches with the right under tile. Fantastic opportunity for GCSE, is all I say. Because the focus is on the content, not on how complicated is this technology that I have to spend 15 weeks learning the software before I can actually make something that moves. All right? So it's a template, it's collecting together the images and it's also having the concept. Um, this bit is also control technology, isn't it? We're defining the parameters. How is something moving? What do we want it to do? Um, and I gave them this, which is just a way of actually planning their work, but also with a review and improvements. And when you get to this, this looks really great on there, and you think, marvellous. And actually, one of the accidental things was it turns over a bit like a book. That's lovely, isn't it? That was accidental. That wasn't intended, and that was part of the evaluation. Oh, I discovered that actually the way I'd sorted out that it would turn worked really well for the book. What we also decided, though, and what he decided when there were 19 children standing around here, was that mm, maybe it would have been better to reverse those Im or invert those images so that actually we'd be able to have an all-round experience. That's creating a sense of audience and purpose, not I like the colour. Yeah? Because actually they were that, oh yeah, I can see that now. You know that terrible experience that 15-year-olds in particular have, though it happens to 43-year-olds as well from time to time, I feel, is you don't want to expose yourself and say, oh yeah, oh my God, that was really bad. It's all good. You know, there's a kind of camaraderie, especially as they get older, between children and say, oh yeah, no, that was really good. I really like the way that you put that image there. Like, what is that image there for? Does it do what, do what you need it to do? So does this application do what you need it to do? Well, it almost does, but if I reverse the images or turn them around, they'd actually be a bit better. So that taught those children in one day what I'd taken about three turns to treat the previous group just by banging my head against the wall. So I had fewer headaches that way, but it's actually, it's, I think it's partly to do with changing the dynamic. And here we are. Projecting in interactive images onto the floor completely changes the dynamic of teaching and learning enables individuals to participate in a different way and they are also capable of more meaningful critical review. That's an observation. I'm not, you know, I'm telling you what I've experienced. I'm not trying to convince you of something. That's how it is. This one, um, this was a lovely end of year, year six thing, project, and they came to do all sorts of bits and pieces here over a whole day, and part of it was summing up their experiences of spending the, the night or two nights on HMS Victory. They've been doing you know, all sorts of projects around transport and the war and blah, 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 and, blah, 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 and combat and battle. And this is a local primary school. And so on the top is the image of HMS Belfast, and then underneath is them on that day. Um, it was an interesting idea, but, but it was observed by the class teacher and felt by the class teacher that the quality of the review of the children's experience was better articulated because they'd had a chance to come and think about it here. It wasn't just a little form to fill in and say, yeah, I really liked it. I liked it when we slept on the deck. I liked it when we did so, 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 so. Because they'd actually come back to revisit that experience. Another thing we don't do often enough in schools, we're so busy romping through the curriculum and romping through the syllabus that revisiting only happens when somebody's missed something. Not revisiting it to really enhance and empower the learning. This is another one, and you'll have seen these because they're popping up here as well. This is, this is the teacher who created that thing with the, the thing on the beams with the, the application on the beams with the leaves and the motorcycle, which we'll be playing with later. She's the art teacher at Wormholt Park Primary School. And when she came to do the ice base day, um, said, mm, I wanted, we're doing self-portraits at the moment. I'm sure we can do something with that. So she sent me the images, photographs, and images, self-portraits of the children. And some of you have been interacting with it up here, and you can play with it a bit more afterwards. This is on the tiles again. So some of these are already reversed, but you can have it whichever way you want. So you can have the self-portraits on the top, and you could predict who it is that's going to appear on the underneath. Um, you can do this with any images. We've done it with reception children. You know, find your partner. Where's your pair? Can you two find the other people that are on the inverse of your um, image? Um, just giving the children an opportunity to experience that and interact with it. When you do a picture that's that big, which these self-portraits pretty much were quite large, you're limited to where you can show it or experience it or share it. But here, you can put it on and it can rotate and you can interact with it and you can actually start immersing the children in the experience of their own work, which is rather nice because it gives them more confidence about what they're going to do, not only in art next very, time... Very quickly. Why be online and Blackboard? Anybody has it? It's about to get a ticket. 
So coming back and looking at this as an observer, thinking about it, reviewing it, it's about, it helps that transformation, it helps the children actually revisit it, come back inside it. Because you want that, don't you? That's what we want, we want confident children. You say, oh yeah, that was good, that was really good. So that actually when they're having a moment that's not so good, you can go back and say, yeah, but do you remember when? Actually, no, I can't remember it because we did it and then it went into a draw. Physical immersive experience. This is more children playing with a different thing of self-portraits. Uh, self they, were, they were using a piece of software that we have here called Grid Magic. I'd really recommend it because it's so easy to use and actually you can do a lot of creative visual work with it. Um, and it also puts in place the foundations for using graphic software like um, Photoshop later on because it, unlike a lot of programs designed for younger children, um, it actually uses the correct, ter the correct terminology in the menus. The te terminology you then later find in Photoshop. So they were creating their own mosaics, which were developments of their image, experimenting with how you transform pictures. Um, and then we just uploaded those very quickly to a, a wipe. And they were then experiencing their image. Okay, experiencing it. As you can see, they like running past it and jumping up and down just to actually interact with their own picture. These are year sixes. There's nothing like seeing a great big picture of yourself up on the wall that you can actually go and wipe off. You know, not least because it doesn't necessarily operate like a mirror. And that whole kind of sense of self and the confidence, actually, no, it's okay, it's okay. Partly because it's so big and it's not quite you and other people can react with it. But nobody really minds. Okay, that's a bit more of the immersive experience. Actually immersing in the technology, immerses in the learning. And here is the wipes for the portraits. 26 children in this class. I mean, we don't normally have chairs in here, as I said. So the 26 children were sitting around there. And I put these on a rotation. So the photograph came up, and they had one minute each. That means 26 minutes. No interruption, no deviation or repetition. There was no disturbance at all. Those children were completely caught up in what was happening. And it was the same experience for each individual child, except each individual child had that experience. And because you could put it on a loop, you didn't have to say, right, it's your turn now, and then somebody did Because they didn't know what was coming next. You see, that what's coming next, or promising of the next bit, is actually also useful in mainstream, isn't it? Not just the few. But interacting with that and seeing that, they were just, it, you could see they grew in their stature while they were actually interacting with that. This is nice, this is year two, they're playing language games on the beam. So um, somebody said at lunchtime, oh, at Charlton or, no, it was at Westlake, wasn't it? They had colour beams, coloured beams. I said, yeah, ours were coloured, and still they started causing us a lot of confusion. So we would have colour games up there in foreign languages with coloured, with different sounds, and sometimes the colours as well if we wanted it. And then we'd have the cards, and people would change the order, and you had to find where the colours were. But if you had, if, if the... Colour, if, the, if the colour up here was pink and this was um, yellow, it became too counterintuitive to find the right beam for the right colour to find the right pattern. So as an experiment, because this is an experimental space, we took the colour filters off. Um, my view is actually they're rather cool without the colour filters on as well. So we'll probably keep it like that for a bit, but we've still got the colour filters. Um, so here they are with the colour filters. So, collaboration. I don't think you can see a teacher there. There isn't one. I mean, they're in the room, but they're not doing anything with this group. They're not organising it. Informal environment, encouraging for all children to have a go. You can create that in your classroom. It doesn't have to be a nice space like this. You can take the sense of this out. There. No teacher telling them what to do there. And I think my favourite picture of all time. There's no question there who's taking the lead, is there? Little Miss Bossy, who's going to be my next deputy over here. I watched her for a bit, and I went down and got my camera to do that. Um, Self-managing, problem-solving. It's what a lot of children manage to do if we stop interfering. So, um, and they do it in nurseries, because it's all set up to do that, and we expect it of them. And the older they get, the less we expect it of them. It's partly to do with that lack of space in Fortress Classroom, and it's something that we unteach them through the institution of schooling. So... Self-managing games, creating their own games, creating their own rules. We know that if you use a piece of knowledge, it's not just creating your own games and then we'll faff about with the beams and have a bit of a nice time with these, langu these languages. 
The language learning is slightly incidental, but that's the purpose. So, if, could you just wave at me if you've read The Tipping Point? Right, okay. Malcolm Gladwell, it's the, the only reason is because he talks about Sesame Street, and Sesame Street very early on found that having, dividing a television screen and having two differently paced activities on the screen, children absorb what's going on in both. And what we try to do in classrooms often is focus, don't we? Focus on what you're doing. Start looking out the window. But, or, you know, this is what we're doing. This is our learning objective, and this is where we are. I mean, I'm character, you know, caricaturing it a bit, but there is that sense of that. But this is language going on because they are playing. Language learning happening because they're playing. And they don't even notice it. So there's a bit of an experiment going on there. That's an engaged child. We've got lots of photographs of engaged children here. A lot of them are at computers. We do engagement at the CLC because we do things slightly differently sometimes and it doesn't feel like school, does it? Because that bell doesn't go every time. It doesn't smell like school. And they're coming here and they like it. And we also, they call us by a Christian name, something that's very common in special schools as well. And there they are, more of them. Um, it's not just children, though, as I said earlier. It's also adults. This is our local authority. This is our principal advisor for primary. And that's our music service person. And it's also people playing, adults playing. Sorry, the lighting, I didn't get, you know, this is just my phone taking these photographs and trying not to use a flash. Okay, but adults coming and having a play. Apart from due to children, we didn't have children in here for the first half term because I thought, if we get the children in, the adults will never come and have a go. So I focused on groups of local authority advisors and consultants and um, teacher groups because we felt that there was something magical about some of this too and we wanted to actually feel that adults had something, had, had a first go at it. It also goes back to my experience with the whiteboard which was you experienced it at the same time as the children. There it was in your board and you suddenly had to learn how to use it right in front of them. So we wanted to give a bit of lead time before the children came in and that's how we did it. Now, oh, what's this one? Fantastic, that's this. Right, now there's several of these on there because some... Um, they're white, white templates, which we can actually put the camera feed into. There's one of our Chloe. Um, we can actually put the camera feed into the image, to be the image underneath. That's why we need this screen down when I've stopped talking. Look, horizontal, vertically, we can flip the camera. So there is an application in there where you can actually pretend you're swimming, swinging from the ceiling. Um, why would you do that? Well, because it might be interesting to see what it feels like swinging from the ceiling. So you have a go when it comes up, see if you can swing from the ceiling. You can dance on the ceiling as well. But going back to that impetus thing, well, we've just been dancing on the ceiling, so anything's possible. All right? We could do that in our writing. Imagine. You know, this is what, here we are in this nice piece of fantasy writing, and imagine what it would be like to dance on the ceiling. Well, that's quite a lot of hard work on a Thursday afternoon when it's wet outside and you've had wet play all week. But let's go and play with it and see what it feels like to dance on the ceiling. Yeah, with this one. No, that's the same. It's doing something slightly different. It's the same one. You'll, you'll see it when it comes. Oops. So flipping the camera is important. But this was what one of the teachers who came and visited recently from an early years department. But I don't think you should call it the eye space. I think you should call it the all in wonder space. Most people, when they come in here, um, there is one word that they use, which is wow. I don't know if I put that as my last slide. No, I didn't. Wow is what they say, and that's without the technology on. So we feel enormously lucky to um, to have ended up in a in a kind of space which um, which we didn't really mean to be quite like this, and that's part of the experiment. We also are completely flabbergasted by the amount of interest in it because we thought we were creating something different for our children in our schools locally that could be used by all of them, every single one of them, to make a difference in a different way. Um, and so it's lovely to actually welcome so many people who, well, you've stayed for the afternoon, and that wasn't just lunch, I think. So I feel that you might actually have some ongoing interest in this kind of space. One of the teachers who came on a ICT and English day, because we work a lot in collaboration with all the advisors and advisory teachers, because we like doing partnership and collaboration, and those of you who are further afield might like to know that. We're very happy. As long as our resource can stretch, that's us human beings. We, we like doing things with other people because we think it, we, it makes it better. Always, always. So 
a collaboration day, the focus was on English, and they came in here for the drama session. I haven't already said this to you today, have I? I've said it to one person, I know that. I'm suddenly having one of those senile moments. I'm thinking, oh my God, maybe I'll talk this one. And at the end of the session, they, had to, they did their evaluations on a blog. And what was marvellous for me, because I was taught in the 70s where nobody, I don't remember anybody teaching us anything, but we seemed to learn quite a lot. Um, so I wanted to have a bit of that for me in here. That, I wanted it because I feel that we've lost a bit of that. I don't mean that we should go back to it completely, but I do think that there's some of that creative spontaneity that we could do with grasping back in mainstream that I think these technologies help with. Um, but one teacher wrote on the blog, it was a great day, I really enjoyed this, that and the other, and I loved the ice space, and the next day, when I was doing whatever, drama or English writing, what I did was move all the tables in my classroom back to the wall and all the chairs and had a great big space in the middle. That was the most empowering thing to her, and I thought, oh yeah, I used to do that quite a lot. But a lot of people don't work like that, because we have our fortress and we have our planning and we actually deliver, and we do that because we actually get a, you know, get a mark at the end, we get a mark at the end, and we want to make sure that there's nothing we haven't done that shouldn't have gone in. Whereas if we actually created a bit more space in our classroom from time to time, and a bit more space to breathe, and a bit more space to move, as we discovered earlier, then actually the learning that takes place in that space might be a bit deeper, and therefore better, and we wouldn't have to worry quite so much about those examination results at the end, because that would be a natural consequence of the learning that's taking place. Thank you. I don't know if you've got any questions. No, or you, can, you can come and argue with me afterwards as well. <laughs> I quite like that. Um, fantastic. Hmm? Sorry? We? Oh, we at the CLC. It was we. You win. You always win the argument. Oh, <laughs> only ones with you, Mark. Um, <laughs> there, nobody wants to say anything. What what do do you, using this, you can see half a dozen children. About, uh, what, what about um, an application with a larger number of children, up to 30? So okay, so how would you deal with that? We, ha we have, so I can talk from experience as opposed to theory. So... There are various ways of doing it. it. It does depend on their size. So if you have 30 reception children in here, um, there are various things that we can set up. We would decide which one was going to make the noise. So, that that, so it, was, it would be the beams or the sound beam. Okay? Um, and we can set these up on loops that are time delimited, time delimited. And we've also, you might have seen that we've got this as well. So that creates one, two, three, four, five potential... Um, focus areas and um, if my maths is right that's how many is that? Six. Sixes. Six. Five sixes. Six children. So it can, you know, it's what reception year one teachers do all the time, isn't it? The carousel for literacy strategy, there it was. You know, that's, so you can take it like that if you all want them to have that kind of thing, but you know, as long as, with the other ones off here, you might do any of your starting point activities here. Don't forget, without the chairs in here, here it feels even more spacious than it already does. But you can long on things, you can kneel up and write on pieces of paper on here. So we're not necessarily talking about computers being in here. So you could use this as the impetus or the starting point here, and then you can spread and do whatever you want. Or you can do your dance work in here. That's something I haven't talked about, actually, is that William Morris Sixth Form are using this space with the pupils not only using it for their dance performance, but they are creating the applications that will be part of their performance. So they've got some starting points. So the cracks, for example, they started out with that and then creating an ice dance starting from that, so moving like the cracks and then spreading it out in the round. So this is just one visit. So they was hat sandwich with them, helping them explore what the technologies could do and then what was behind it so that they can then start thinking, oh, yeah, okay. So my dance for my coursework, my marvellous A-level, because I'm going to get an A at this rate, because I'm thinking already about the dance. I'm not thinking about how long is it going to take me to learn the technology. I'm thinking about what's it going to be and how is that going to enable my dance. So you can do, you know, it's about 17 of those. Maybe it's not quite so many as that. Your dialogue was about 24. So, <laughs> of course, as a management 
thing, but there's a management thing always, isn't there? And, and it depends what you want the learning to be. So if it's an experience, because that's also good, some of the times I have to be reminded that, Catherine, don't, it's not just a focused activity we want, we just want them to have an experience of these technologies. So we'll have six groups of, five groups of six on a carousel just to play. And then we'll come back and we'll do some making ourselves. So, so say you've got a dance lesson plan, a standard dance lesson plan. Um, what would be the process of using this technology and integrating a standard dance lesson plan for a group of 30, year 3 or 4 or whatever okay. it is? Well, how, 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 what would you think you would have to go through to, to, okay. to make it work? Alright, well what I would go through, um, for a start it's, right, what's the learning anyway? So what's the context of this and what are we learning? And then. To what extent can this be supported by the technologies that are in here? So what kind, you know, is, are we doing something to a given theme anyway? So is there something here where there's a theme that we can actually incorporate in that? Because I'd be thinking about several sessions. I might be thinking about a half a term, might not. Um, so we've got, let's focus on this particular application just for the moment. So we might have that as the starting point. So, the, you know, if it was night or the moon or, plan, you know, journey into space, because we could link that with music in year six. Um, but now let's take it back to year three. Um, we, it, for me, there's no difference as, as to the way you might use any prop, if you like, integrating any, you know, we, in, in gymnastics, we, we start out with floor work, don't we, and then we start com making complex moves and we then start making combinations of those. And this is another element that can be inserted. What I'd really like to do, let's imagine that this was our own school and we had our own pupils here. Over the period of the year, you would actually look for progression, wouldn't you? So an initial experience that would enhance a learning outcome in dance. And, you know, and I've also talked to the children, how we, we're going to use this application, how could you use it? Because we, you know, we can set the music behind some of those as well. What's the, what's the one that, you know, this is what we're going to use. And I don't mind how you use it. That's the other dance one, because it's the, I don't mind how you use it, but at some point in your dance, you're going to have to do something like this. Just like you would with a piece of ribbon or... You know, so um, that's what's most important for me about these technologies and about the way they work, and also about how so Mark and Mishka work, is the learning is first. It doesn't so, get in the way. So first of all, the children certainly have got to be, be by some yeah. and get to grips with the technology first before you lap on that application. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's a dance lesson, isn't it? So sure. What, yeah, sure. what can we do to enhance that? But, you know, the coloured lights could also be quite neat, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah. We're going to do this kind of movement over here, yeah. and then I want you to think of a different kind of movement in this colour. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think it's a, we're only limited by our own imagination, and sometimes by strategy documents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a huge, huge prerogative for creativity and modification and, and adaption, isn't it? Yeah. In, in, yes. In, and, in and I think, you know, we see a lot of teachers. I mean, we get to see the brave ones, don't we? Because they come here. So the ones who don't want to come in. Usually when people come here, they feel a bit better when they leave because they tell us they do feel. And that's, they feel better about switching the computer on usually because we've given them coffee and a nice lunch. But in their heads, oh, yes, no, I can do that. Um, it's, it's something different, but it's possible. Not another, here's another mountain for me to climb to do something interesting and creative with my children. And it's here. And it may well be in school. So I've been talking to another school recently talking about their futures technology, and they took me to their music room and said, would that thing work in here? Would that moon thing work in here? I said, yeah. Because this is a deputy head. I don't think I got the ice space the first time I came, because my early years team have just come back and they can't stop talking about it, so I'm coming again. All right, so we know that changing minds and changing views and changing practice takes a long time, and it's just that, oh yeah, I could do that. And however simple, it will make a difference. So just the photographs, just Mishka coming with the photographs and then wiping it off means that children in his group who have never strung four words together as a phrase in public are doing it, will capture it. <laughs> From your experience, as a strategy, would a sort of worked example progress the kids faster than starting out at the level where he go, you create it yourself with a minimum of the instruction? Yeah, I mean, that's Bruner, isn't it? We start with the scaffolding. It depends to what age, what age group you're working with. And, you know, for, for that bit for the GCSE group, I would expect them to be, you know, I wasn't giving them anything different apart from uploading it to a template. I was telling them how to deal with things using skills that are pretty much level five. 
finding an image, making sure it's the right format and that kind of thing. The ICT wasn't actually that complicated. But uh, you're absolutely right. I wouldn't not do that with younger children, but it's to do with the amount of support and the time it takes to do it. And I also would do it with, special, with children in special schools. You know, because they, they, we can all be part of this greater thing. It's about the approach in a way, isn't it? So reception children, they can go and take those photographs. Well, you're going to give them with, to a helper, aren't you? <laughs> you tell, uh, you know, and, but give them the camera, get them to take the photographs, and then you, you upload it. We're going to make something for the floor, and I want pictures of things that are round. You know, th this, is, this is happening in classrooms, in early years classrooms, without this. So this is a lifting it up to another new experience as well. And also, there's that national curriculum requirement to give children experiences with new technologies. And we feel that um, this gives them a critical experience of it. Because we don't know, you know we're not sure what the world's going to look like at the end of next week, do we? So you know, when they're in our positions, they're going to have to be, they're going to be thinking creatively about all sorts of things, all sorts of stimuli around them. Um, this is used in marketing, isn't it, Mishka? So Westfield, Harrods, these guys are involved in it. So, ooh, magic, magic, magic. I'm going to completely buy and sell, you know, I'm going to buy everything that's in the shop now because I've had this magical experience. I'm walking, oh, oh, I know how that moon works because I've seen it at the CLC. It's really good. <laughs> that's, isn't, it, isn't it good, Mum? Isn't it good? I've just got a little image of the moon, and if I do this, it shakes. Isn't that clever? That's the computer doing that. So, sorry to pursue the point. That's all right. <laughs> I mean, we can pursue this separately. No, 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 just one last one. one, yeah. last one. Um, obviously, the worked example is a thing. You could do um, a guided stages thing. Um, and to what extent would you include um, a, a finished piece of music I mean, what, as opposed to creating the music as well? Okay. well you, you do do that easily. Yeah, easy, please. Yeah, okay. yeah. Easy. So uh, uh, sometimes we divide classes when they come here. To go back to your original question about 30, sometimes we have 15 in here, yeah. and 15 next door, and then they switch over. So they're doing something on the computers that ultimately you know, it could be music, it could be collecting images, it could you know anything that's actually key to what they're actually going to be doing elsewhere. Yeah. But that's a, it's a question of management actually. That one isn't it? As always, <laughs> classroom management. Good. It's now over to. Um, the Omi team, for the, and they're going to talk you through a few new toys, and then we'll get the ladder out and drop the um, 